Man, it feels good to be in the house of the Lord tonight, doesn't it? I found out two things. Either I'm very hype and excited about tonight, or the Lord's presence is in this place. And I picked the number two, that the Lord's presence is in this place. I just want to exalt him, glorify him right now, that we, he can just do what he can do, what only he can do. Man, I told our teenager, I said, the most exciting thing about is when you get in the presence of God, all things change. When you get into the presence of God, worry goes. What is worry? That's a name, the name that is submission into the name of Jesus. And I believe God wants to deposit some things tonight that is gonna change our lives, that will lean us into a deeper relationship with the Father, that will lean us to push to be an overcomer, to lean us into the presence of the Almighty as he comes out of heaven and comes and rescues his children, and he comes and does what the Word of God says, and he shows that he's not a man that shall lie. I'm very excited. Man, the Lord is good. You guys can be seated. Man, I'm really, I'm just pumped to be with you guys tonight. I am so pumped. And I'm excited that there is teenagers in the front row. You guys, I love them. Pastor Chad, hey, listen, nice shout out. But listen, I will tell you, I am impressed by you guys. You guys are so faithful. I love the upper conference. We had an upper room conference. And that really was what the experience that we found, that it truly was an upper room experience. And we got some pictures that I want to show you guys. I found out in youth ministry that we could show the group picture. That's awesome, and I love every teenager. But my heart was, when we got to the upper room, that they had that first picture, and they were laying their hands on praying for each other. That happened this weekend. And then when you go back, you go to Accelerant, uh, that's Accelerant picture. The good thing is about Accelerant that a lot of people don't know is that service starts about 7 o'clock, and about 9 o'clock, it's usually altar call and things are rolling. Well, this is a picture at 11.15 at night that people don't know about. So that's what God was doing. And then, and the thing is, is like, this isn't just something that's just happened overnight, but I've seen these teenagers grow and lay their hands on each other, like Travis and Dylan, that the teenagers ran out of the pews, and honestly, that changed me. And I said, God, you're doing something special. And then in our weekly services, and I have one more picture, that this is our altar in the front of the teen center, that this is what the altar looks like in the front of the teen center almost every single week right now. God is doing something special. So over the years, over the last year and a half, we've seen him do some special things. I've been rough on them. They can say that. They can all testify that I've been very rough on them. But I've also loved them, and they know that I love them, and I want them to be everything God's called them to be. Uh, we're really not pansying over there. I asked a teenager earlier, I said, what's your favorite thing about coming here? You know what they said? I stopped caring what other people thought about me. And I said, we are on the right path. That's what we have to do. Because if you're going to love Jesus in a culture sometimes that is denying that Jesus is Lord, sometimes you're going to have to care what, not care about what they say and start picking up your cross and caring after Jesus and receive every blessing and let him touch you and let him give you the identity. And that's what, I'm, that's what I'm so excited about, you guys. Thank you guys for being so faithful. Thank you that you give me opportunity. And then one of them said this tonight. He said, man, you don't dress up for us. You know what? And the guy that said that, I think it was you, Cameron, wasn't it? No, maybe it wasn't Cameron. I don't remember who said it. But whoever, uh, Dylan. Yeah, Dylan said to me, hey, you know what? I almost wore a T-shirt up here just because I knew I was going to get that comment. I, I had a T-shirt picked out, and I said, I'm going to wear that T-shirt up there. And then I was like, yeah, I might get a button up on. I'm trying to look good for my wife, which, hey, I get a lot of scene, but my wife, I just want to say this, she is the backbone. She helps me tremendously. She is there for me, supportive, loving, caring for the young ladies that text her and send messages and calls and helps out more than I can ever think. I really want to give a big shout out to my honey, Alexandra, I love you. So over in youth ministry, we've been learning a couple of things. Uh, we've been on the attributes of God and who God is, and a couple of things that we go is that he's infinite, he's omnipresent, which means he has no boundaries. He has, he's eternal, he never changes, God never changes. Uh, God is just, God is good, God is merciful. That means, if merciful, if you don't know what that means, is not receiving something negative when you do deserve it, or he's compassionate. He's self-sufficient. He doesn't need anything. He doesn't need food. He doesn't need anything. He exists in and of himself. That God is love. God is omnipotent, which means he's all-powerful. He's holy and perfect, and that means there's no other way he can improve. God cannot improve in any way. And he also, he is wise and sovereign. And, and the very final thing is that God is faithful. 
So if you ask your teenager what we've been going over the last three weeks, you'll see those things. And then we hit into the subject of sin, stopping the boundary of our relationship with God, that that's the one thing that hinders us from walking in tight-knit relationship with him. So uh, when we talk about all those things, it, started, it really changed me because when we went to Accelerant, I'll kind of share with everybody, they know the story, but I'm riding with my man Butch, and we have a full van full of teenagers, and we're leaving. And uh, one of the speakers, his name was Preacher Girl. And Preacher Girl could bring the house down. Could she not bring the house down, boys? I'm telling you, she could bring the house down. She was straight fire that night on Saturday night. Of course, she saw what the altar looked like. And I'm riding down the road, and we're coming back down the road, and you go through the curves. When you go from Gatlinburg to Pigeon Fours, there's like, you know, the little curvy road you got to go for about a 10-minute drive. And we got underneath the tunnel, and all of us held our breath. You know, we did the cool thing, you know, the thing that everybody should do. Uh, I found out that if I slow down at the very end, I might trick one or two to finally breathe and so I can beat them because I don't like losing. Neither do they, but I really don't like losing. But I got to the thing, and I said, God, man, these teenagers are going to come back uh, to youth group. And be like, man, Pastor Zach, you can't even preach. They were like, man, you are lame. We are going to go follow a preacher girl somewhere else. And I felt like God's put it right in my spirit, and he said, just do what I say. I put right in there, he said, you just do what I say. So from now on, from accelerant to today, I will say that my goal is, or I'm striving to do exactly what he says to do. And because of that, I believe God is blessing it. It's not because I give the best message. It's not because I'm great and mighty and I'm popular, no. It is the thing that God's doing the work and I'm just the vessel and men behind seeing everything God's doing. I'm not making the teenagers raise their hand and worship. I'm not in behind them doing that. God's dealing with them, loving on them, speaking to them, and doing that. God's doing the work. I'm just the supportive backbone that sits in the back and says, I'm going to pray for you when you need it. I'm there for you when you need a call. And that's what I've seen God do. So that's the goal of Remnant. If you want to know what we're trying to do over there, whatever God says, we're trying to do it. Whatever he says, we're making sure that he does it. So within that, we're going to talk on the subject tonight is don't miss the blessing. Don't miss the blessing. In a culture today, I don't want you to miss the blessing. I don't want you to miss everything God has for you because God has some special things for us, and it's lined up in his word, and I found out that his promises are yes and amen, and they never say no. And I found out that if God was in a UFC match with the devil, it would be no fight. It would be straight knockout. It wouldn't even throw the first punch that there's no chance of him coming across and knocking God in the head or anything. God has already had the final say. Revelation has proved that to us, and that's what we stand on. So we believe that God is the ultimate source, and no one can uh, knock him off his throne. No man, no human, no authority of this earth can top, top, top God what he says and what he's going to do. So I want us tonight to get to the grip or get inside of us, don't miss the blessing. Because don't missing the blessing can happen very easy. Because distraction comes very quickly, very, very quickly. And it will knock us off our path and derail everything that God's trying to do in us and God's trying to settle inside us and God's trying to birth inside of us. I know I had a prayer not too long ago and I felt like that I always prayed, God, make sure that we put our hands to the, to the plow, putting the work. Not only did I feel like God's saying put the hands to the plow and do the work, and we see that take place every single week here and every single day there's ministry in and out of these doors, but I feel like God said sometimes we need to pick up the mantle and the mantle is, or some of us need to pick up the mantle, and what the mantle is, is your calling. That some of you guys have anointing inside of you that you haven't pulled outside of yourselves. Some of you guys have callings that you've never called to life. Some of you guys have God-given gifts inside of you to lay your hands on the sick, and they shall recover, but you've never tapped into that power. And that's what I think about when I say don't miss the blessing, because I don't want you to miss everything God has for you. Because when you have your person and you, you were born and everything God put inside of you, guess what it happened? Not when you became 20 years old and good looking. It didn't come when you were 13 and you got every girl in school. It didn't come when you were the best ball player on the field. It didn't come then. It came in your mother's womb when we were very yet in a substance and had no purpose or we didn't have anything that we could do of ourselves. God birthed it then. And when God birthed it then, he said, that was the final say. He gave the devil an eviction note out of your life and said, this is my purpose, this is my will, and this is what I'm going to call them to do. And so when we get to that place, I want us to see that that is impactful, and all of us in this room have that still. 
No matter what age, how much failure we've made, many mistakes we've made, how much we've ran from God, rebelled against God, God is a God of sovereignty, and he proved that, that he will never change. He says that he is the man that doesn't lie, that God is not going to lie to us, so God will redeem our path, or he will restore the, what has been destroyed. He will refresh into you everything that God birthed in you when you were very, very, very little in the substance in your mother's womb. So don't miss the blessing tonight. So Ephesians 1, 3 through 10, I'm going to be talking from it, and it says this, and it says, how blessed is God, and what a blessing he is. He is the father of our master, Jesus Christ, and takes us to the high places of blessing in him. So we have a realization of who God is because we've been talking about the characteristics, and we need to see that God is the God that takes us to high blessings and blessings in him. That God will take us to the high places if we'll be submissive. God will take us to the high places when we submit our lives into him and realize that's who he is. God doesn't live as one that's leaving mediocre. He never told the disciples, man, hey, listen, you can't do this. You can't, you'll never be anything in life. You'll never achieve. No, he said, listen, if you're having troubles, once you fast and see what I can do. Once you tap into the power. Won't you tap in? Won't you be something you've never been before? So that's what my goal tonight is that I would push you to try to be something you've never been before. I know Pastor talked about it a couple of weeks ago, but I want you to be something you've never been before is that you push into the blessings of God. So it says this. It says, continuing, long before he laid down earth's foundation, he had us in mind. That tells me when I go back to the book of Genesis and I go back to the very beginning, God had me in mind and he had you in mind. And that is so confirming, that is so peaceful, that settles me. That settles me as an individual that I could run with doubt. I could run in fear. I could run in anxiety. I can run in depression thinking, God, are you going to make it? God, are you even paving the path for me? God, are you even there for me? I don't have the ability like my friends here. I don't have the looks like them. I don't have the personality like this. No, God says right here, he, long before he laid down earth's foundation, he had us in mind. So God knew that when he created us that he already had everything planned out from the very beginning. Only thing that he was ready to do was just for us to walk in it. That's what he says, hey, listen, you come to me and find rest. You come to me and I'll guide your steps. Everything I found out that God says, when you step, I come through. I know I told the teenagers that about three weeks or two weeks ago, I felt like the Lord gave me scripture over and over and over. And it was one scripture and it said, draw nigh to him and he'll draw nigh to me or draw into him, or seek him, and that he'll come meet me right in the middle of where I am. And I found out that that's for all men. That's for your heart tonight, and that's for my heart, that every time that I put my foot forward, that God's coming right there to meet me. Every time I step, he's coming to stepping towards me, that he's not a man that is just making me step, and no, he's coming. He's coming to my rescue. He's coming to meet my need. He's coming to supply everything according to his uh, riches in Christ Jesus. He's coming to do that. So now that we know that he has, since the foundations of the earth that he has in mind, he had settled on us as the focus of his love. Ooh, that's good. That's good because when we focus that God is focusing on to love you, I don't find my identity from everything else. I don't find my, uh, my passion. I don't find the fulfilling from everything else that culture can bring. Because there's so many hobbies and there's so many different things that we could put our eyes on and make the mark and goals and everything we can set for. But listen, there's always this longing that sets inside of us in a man's heart that says there's something there that needs to be fulfilled that only God can do. And I'm so glad that God put that inside of us because if not, I would worry if I would even be standing here tonight. But because I know that God put something inside of us that only he can feel, that it tells me that not only he's got that for me, but he's got that for you because he wants us to see that from the very beginning that he focused on to love you. He focused on to love you that only he can supply. Because God is a jealous God, he made a path that he put a thing up that would make you draw near to him. And when you drew near to him that you felt something you've never felt before. When you, when you sought after him, you found out something that you've never found in anything else. How, how good is that? How confirming is that? How loving is that? And it says this, he settled on us the focus of his love to may, be made whole and holy by his love. He doesn't say that he came and condemned you. He doesn't say he came and tells you everything right and wrong. He said that he came in his love to show you how the focus is to be made whole and holy by his love. I have found out the roadblocks of my life and 
the things that I've ran a course and every time that I've stumbled or every time God's uh, laid a roadblock in my life of I've had to stop and take an agenda of my own life that God was loving some mess out of me and trying to stop me from something that might destroy me, that might lead me astray from him. It might ruin my relationship with my lovely bride. It might ruin my relationship with my church body. It might ruin my relationship with him. So I have to be understanding that God sometimes in his love is stopping me from some things I don't know. So I have to focus and be made whole. Being made whole, I found out that repentance is okay for the church. Repentance in, in uh, culture, I feel like that it sounds like a, I don't know a good word for it, but it sounds like repentance sounds like um, something that is super religious. Repentance for me is a biblical principle that comes down to that gets things right. I get things right with God and I get settled again. I get calm again. I get peace again. I let the things that, listen, that is inside of me and I repent of things that I even maybe don't know and I repent and I get things right and I become the person that he's called me to be and I become whole again. Because there's things in my life that I always like the, the terminology that, that you have the junk out of your parents' uh, car or their trunk that sometimes you got some junk in your trunk. I like that terminology because I've realized sometimes I have some junk in my trunk. Pastor Chad talked about the illusion of the suitcase and how you have a suitcase and that could be weighing you down. And I think about that as a lot of times in our life is that we have a suitcase that is wearing us down. Or really, like at Volvo, we have that backpack that is loaded down with our lunch, is loaded down with phone chargers, uh, anything else that we could think of, that we have it loaded down in our back and we're walking in like this. Everybody's walking like this because they're, they're so loaded down. But God wants to make us whole, and when he makes us whole, he wants to make us holy. And a holy is such a good thing because he is holy. And when we walk in that, we're going to experience the presence of God. And when the presence of God goes, sickness has to leave. When the presence of God comes, anxiety has to leave. When the presence of God goes, freedom has to come into the building. When the freedom of holiness comes in, some things change around. In circle in our atmosphere, my home has changed around when the glory of the Lord is in there. This church has changed around when the glory of the Lord is in Their teen center is changed around when the presence of God is there. When the Holy Spirit is evident, things change. No longer is man getting glory, but we say the Lord was in this place. The Lord has fulfilled what he said. So... <clears throat> So as we continue on, it says, long, long ago, he decided to adopt us into his family through Christ Jesus. What a pleasure he took in planning this. Adoption, I looked at adoption, and adoption is when someone chooses you, or they pick you. They choose you to be theirs. Listen, we are, uh, I told Josh Hewitt one time, I said, listen, we are born looking like our parents, but we die looking like our decisions. That was just free. But I really want to talk about you're born looking like your parents, you are, you're your parents, and you're born looking like them, but God's saying, hey, listen, I know that that's your mom and dad, but he's trying to adopt you. He's trying to adopt you. He's trying to, he's trying to adopt us into his family through Christ Jesus. What Jesus did on the cross is what he's trying to do. He's trying to see, let us see that, listen, we need the blood of Jesus. We need some things cleaned up in our life. We need, we need his forgiveness. We need his grace. We need the blood to come in and rescue us from where our dirty mess, what our last night looked like, what our yesterday looked like, all of our trials and errors and mistakes, what today looked like. We need him. And that is okay because because I'm telling you when a repentant heart comes that God's going to do some crazy. God's going to show up and do some things and get some things straightened out for us. Get us some straight thinking inside, not be so wishy-washy. So uh, he wanted us to enter into the celebration of his lavish gift getting by the hand of his beloved son. Because of the sacrifice of the Messiah, his blood had poured out on the altar of the cross. We're a free people free of petitions and punishment, chalked up by all of our misdeeds, and not just barely free either, abundantly free, abundantly free. I think about this so much in my own walk. It's like I have two choices. I either can just kind of lay low and just want to be walked through the life, or I can pick that God can come in and that he can stop and raise a standard against the enemy, that God can defend me, that God can come in and rescue me when everything looks like hell's broke loose, that it looks like a hurricane's around me in the middle of that storm. I know that God can be my rescue. I know God, that, that he can come through. That I know that we can be abundantly free. And that's so, there's purpose because when we're abundantly free, our personalities change. We don't look so long. We don't look so uh, depressed or down or worried and just mad at the world. 
we go into it with a different mindset. When the love of Jesus comes in, you start loving people and you don't understand why you're loving them. You start caring about people and their needs and you don't understand why you're doing that. You start putting people before you and you don't understand why you're willing to get into your wallet and reach into where it's deep and give into something that you don't understand what's going on. Until you see, because when Jesus does something, he makes us abundantly free, everything about us has to change. None in the old. He didn't say, I made you a new creation, but I'm going to keep all this. No. He said, I made you a new creation, and all things have passed away. That means he's going to restore us from the bottom of our souls to the top of our head. He's going to change some things. He's going to make some things whole. We're not just barely free, but we're abundant free. And he thought of everything. And he thought of everything. I feel like the Lord told me right here in the middle of this, I wrote this in a relay. He said, you can rely on them. You can rely on them. I feel like we just need to stop for a second because I feel like God spoke to me heavily on that. You can rely on God. Whatever you're going through right now, you can rely on him. He's not gonna fail you. He's not gonna let you down. He's not gonna just leave you there. You can rely on him. You know what rely is? Because if you're like me, sometimes I need the definition. And you need this rely word. Rely means you depend on with full trust or confidence. Fully trust in him. You can rely on him. Because God thought of everything from the foundation of the earth. He had this bad boy planned out. That's the reason why I love in scripture when he says, his thoughts are not my thoughts. And his ways are not my ways. Because if they were, it'd be a little scary. Washington Redskins would probably be a good football team. <laughs> I haven't watched the NFL in probably like five years. <laughs> but, but seriously, I, I might have even made that change. But seriously, you can rely on him. That's what I need tonight. Hearing a bunch of word, great. Seeing my friends, great. But knowing someone I can rely on and that's never going to leave me and forsaken me, He's going to have my back. He's going to uplift me when I'm down. He's going to beat me through the trials and deaths of life, and he's going to be through the highs and the lows. He's going to be with me in every step of the way of how to be a dad, how to be a youth pastor, how to be a friend, how to be anything and everything that this life has called me to be, that I can rely on him, and he's never going to let me down. When I cry out to him that he comes and he's my helper, he comes and rescues me. He comes and restores my soul. He comes and uplifts me. He comes and gives me a voice. And not only does it say and rely, when we go into Scripture, Father, it says, He will provide for everything we could possibly need. Everything we possibly need. Everything we possibly need. This Scripture right here, I don't even really have to preach it, just to be honest. It settled everything already in it. It's already got it, what it, we need. We just know that He provides everything we could possibly need. If that was the only note, that you saw on the floor and it says, God said he's gonna uh, supply everything we possibly need and you took that home and you had that every single day and you saw that every day. Every time things came against us, we would lift that up and say, God, you're gonna supply everything we need. God, you know we need milk. You know we need bread. God, you know we need baby formula. God, you know we need whatever this may be, whatever it comes. He says he's gonna provide everything. That's who he is. And not only that is that he's not even going to provide, but he's going to let us in on the plans he took such delight in on making. Weeks ago, we were talking about the Holy Spirit, and I was talking about the Holy Spirit is that we're not just guided by just our feelings, but the Holy Spirit made residence, and we are the temple of the Holy Spirit when we got saved. And he wanted to change some things around in the book of Acts. You can find that all over it. And he talks about the Holy Spirit coming and making residence here. And it even says in 1 Corinthians, it talks about seeking out the deep things of God. But that's what the Spirit of God does in the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will start revealing things to you. And will start speaking to you and start telling you things to do and say and be, maybe even telling you to hold your tongue. The Holy Spirit comes and does only what he can do. He's a gentleman. He's a lover. A gentleman looks like when you go to my wife, I try to make it a goal that I open up her door every time, and I honestly learned that from this church, and if I probably was not here, I might not ever do it. But... I learned that from this church that you guys led me in a way that I could be a gentleman to my wife is that when she has her hands full or she has her hands empty, that I'm the first person at her door. And I'm the first person that lets her in and I calmly let her into the truck of the door. I've been into the truck. I'm a gentleman on that. 
In the same way as what the Holy Spirit does, is that he's a gentleman when he comes. The Holy Spirit wants to speak to us and to guide us and to lead our lives and not let us fret and worry about what tomorrow holds. The Holy Spirit wants to give us confidence. He wants to give us some things and speak to us and allow us to walk in everything he has for us. Because the Holy Spirit, when he's there, he doesn't lead us into evil. He, it, that's not what the Holy Spirit is. God's not fighting against himself. The Holy Spirit is there to guide you into a closer relationship with him. He's saying, hey, listen, I got a longing for my dad right now. Maybe I don't know what's happening, but I feel like I need to pray for my dad. That's the Holy Spirit there speaking to us. Maybe I need to pray for a teen member that I don't even know, and I just feel them heavy on me, and I just feel like that's the Holy Spirit speaking to me. And not only that, is that sometimes the Holy Spirit will bring us out of our comfort zone, and he says, if you do this, I'll meet you, and you have not the right words to say. Because the Holy Spirit is a gentleman, but also it is of God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and he wants to do some crazy, and he wants to change some lives, but we need the Holy Spirit to guide us. We need that. I need that, importantly, in my life of a guider of when not to do some things, really, <laughs> and when to, because a lot of times God wants to take us exactly where he goes, and I need his voice, and I need, need him guiding me every step of the way. I don't want to go just lostly or wondering. So it shows us this, eh? letting us in on the plans he took such delight in making. Set it all out before us in Christ, a long-range plan in which everything would be brought together and summed up in him. Everything in the deepest heaven, everything on planet Earth. This is a long-range plan. He set everything up for us. God's set everything up. He gave us free will, but he set everything up for us, and he gave a will out. And the good thing about free will is, is this. It sucks when someone makes you love them, but it's very loving when someone, you just love them because you love them. And that's what God's looking for. God wants someone just to love him for loving him because of who he is. It's no force. It's nice that I know my wife loves me and I don't have to force her to like me or love me. Even though I do try to take her out to nice restaurants, and you know what I mean? I try to dress up and button up so I look good in front of her. Hey, you know, I might do a couple push-ups later. You know what I mean? Flex a couple times. But it is nice to know that I want to know that and love God just for who he is. And that this long range plan or the journey of life that you're on, God wants to guide every step of the way. He wants to take every step that you have. That's the ultimate goal, is that he wants to guide you every step of the way. He don't wanna leave you one step. That's not who he is. If we go back to the attributes of God, I can prove to you in scripture that he's not gonna leave you. That God in his love, he definitely cares about you. That God does want to provide every need that you have. Every one of them. That's who he is. He's a God that is merciful and ready to forgive. He's ready to make things right and mend things that have been broken. He's a redeeming God. So as Zach comes on and doodles a little bit, because it always sounds a little better. I'm going to close this out, and I want, to, I want to know something, do you guys to know something. I'll put this in my last scripture. In Matthew 1, 23, it says this. It says, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. That's really what I want to hit tonight, is that his name shall be Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. See, God's not super far out from us. God's not far and distant and lost, and he's out there just chilling in the universe. This God that we serve and this God that we promote and the gospel that we preach and the Bible that we read tells me that God's right here right now. And not only does he tell me that, he tells me that God right now is in some of you, that have declared that Jesus is Lord, that he lives inside of you. Some of us sometimes just need to know that when we talk about the scripture that I can rely on God. But when I'm trying to rely on God, I remember that God is with us. God is with me through every up and down. God is with me through every trial and ever. The good times and the bad times. When everything looks pretty and when everything looks ugly, God is with us. He's there to provide. He's there to restore. And there he's there to give you hope. It's just so sweet to me tonight. So sweet to me tonight. 
I love that more than anything. I put three sermons together. And usually I struggle on one, I put three together in the last whatever. Three. And I said, dude, this is hard. I'm never doing this again. I don't know which one I want to preach. And I was like, God, you just take over whichever one. But I think tonight that we just need that. God told me before here that he was just going to give peace. Calm. That's what I want you to have tonight. So tonight I'm going to ask you to stand. Guys, do me a favor. The family, right? Let me just all lift our hands to heaven. I want you to do something that isn't really on me. However you say it in a whisper or just talk it out loud, I want you to say, God, just take it all. God, take it all. Take this weight. Take this weight, God. Lord, your scripture says that you give peace that passes all understanding. And anything that is not of peace is not of you. God, just rest upon me right now. Yes. Yes, Lord, just rest. Rest upon us right now. God, bring calm right now. Calm right now. Settle us. Settle us. We're busy bodies. God, we're still, we're in tomorrow. We're going home doing homework. God, we're, we're trying to make things right. We're trying to restore things. God, no. Calm right now. Everybody right now, calm. 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 Before we do this, before I pray for my brother, I'm going to give you opportunity. I want you, if right now, if you want to make things right with the Lord, I want you to say, God, forgive me. Forgive me of the things that I know that I do. Forgive me of the things that even I don't. God, make me a new creation in you. I believe you died on the cross and we rose again. And that now, God, you're with me. God, me every step of the way. Be my Savior. guys, listen, I'm going to just open up the altar, and I'm going to pray for my friend. I'm just going to open up the altar and let God do some work. A girl from the awakening said this, and I shared it with everyone earlier. She said, at the very beginning of the very beginning of the upper room conference, she said, you know what? God doesn't need you. And I'm thinking, you know what? That's really right. God doesn't need me. But when he does... I want to be ready. I want to be ready when he does, and I want to be setting, burning. And no matter if it's intercession, I don't matter if it's running an XLR cable, I don't care if it's praying for my friend, I don't care if it's loving, I don't care if it's pulling out my wallet and paying for someone. I want to make sure that I'm right. I want to make sure I'm burning, excited. And tonight, we're all in one accord, right? Everybody's here. Remnant teams, everybody's in one accord, one building. So we're just going to let God have his way. And the altar is open as I pray for my friend.
All my words fall short I've got nothing new How could I express All my gratitude I could sing these songs As I often do Hey guys! Sorry, Zach. Hey, I found myself in the upper room, a conference. When we started praying, the greatest thing happened when it happened. We started praying for people that were not even actually in the room. And Brody just came to me and said, his grandma's really sick. I know anybody with a grandma in here knows what that feels like. So listen, I just want us to call down heaven 
I remember when that woman came and touched just the hem of his garment, that the glory of the Lord came and shined and healing took over her place, took over her body. We just believe that she does the same for his grandma. Is that okay? Can we pray for him? God, we just glorify you and we exalt your name right now, God. We believe that you're high upon heaven's throne and there is none other like you, Lord, and that you want to heal Brody's grandma right now, that you want to touch her body exactly where she's at, God, that you can manifest yourself, that you can come in that room and change the atmosphere, God, that you can bomb the enemy, God, and you can loose your angels, Lord, that you are good, God, that there is none other like you, all sovereignty, all powerful, God, and that your healing touch will be in that place, that the name of Jesus is the name above all names and that any sickness, death, in that room has to flee in the name of Jesus. We declare victory in the name of Jesus. Peace in the name of Jesus. God, we know that your word has the final say, that no man can stop what you do, that no enemy can stop what you do. God, that you, Lord, are the ultimate authority. We pray victory in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So I throw up my hands, praise you again and again. It's all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. I know it's not much, I have nothing else to forgive. Set for our singing, hallelujah, hallelujah. I've got one response. I've got just one move. Is my arms stretch wide? I will worship you. So I throw my hands, praise you again and again. All that I have is a hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know it's not much. I have nothing else before King except for a heart singing hallelujah hallelujah come on my soul Oh, don't you get shy on me, lift up your song. Cause you got a light inside of those lights. Get up and praise the Lord. Oh, come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me, lift up your song. Cause you got a light. Inside of those lines, get up and praise the Lord. Oh, come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me, lift up your song. You got a light inside of those lines, get up and praise the Lord. Oh, come on, my soul. Oh, don't you get shy on me. Lift up your song. You got a light inside of those lines. Get up and praise the Lord. So I throw my hands. Praise you again and again. All that I have. He's 
Would rocks cry out to worship? His glory taught the stars to shine. His creation longs to have the words to sing. His joy is mine. We magnify your name, serve the glory, the honor, and the praise. Oh, Jesus, this song is forever yours. A thousand hallelujahs, a thousand more. Who else would die for us? Resurrection means our right. There isn't time enough to explain, but I have eternity to try. With a Song 
To the Lord, to the land, to the King of To the king of heaven, we will sing. To the king of we will sing for we magnify your name. You alone deserve. Glory, the honor and the praise, Lord Jesus. This song is forever yours. A thousand hallelujahs, a thousand more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. And God's doing some special stuff here. These teenagers are hungry for some answers. If you guys have heard like how they pray and ask for their mom and dad and their cousins and grandmas and the things of school and the worry, it might change how we pray might change how we think about it. I have a kid up here just said, hey, listen, I want to give his life to Jesus, and he's got tears running out of his eyes. And I looked at him, and I said, real man, cry. And you know what he did? He pulled me even closer. And another young lady said that, hey, listen. She said, it's okay if I share. She said, I just feel like I'm not a good person. And she said, I want to make sure me and God are good. And she also said that she wanted to leave. She, she gave her life to Jesus tonight, too. And I'm proud of you. I kept you guys out till 821. I'm sorry. These teenagers are a lot younger, and I know they stay up a lot later than you guys do. Yeah. They're ready to go again. I can see all in their eyes they're ready to go again. 
Thank you guys so much for being here. I'm really hoping that God just spoke to you one thing tonight. If not one thing, a hundred things. And then we can just dig deeper into them together as a corporate. Come together and that we get into the presence of God and we let him to change some things, change some atmospheres, change some homes and change some lives for his glory, that he would be glorified and exalted and that this community would know that there is a church on the hill and that they are loved and cared about and that we want them here to love and care about them and to see God do some miracles. So I guess on that, you guys are dismissed in the name of the Lord.